to remove the cab rear, slide out the axle, the cover panel. Just lift it straight up and out. Right, controls. That's the regulator or throttle. That's the steam blower, which which provides a jet of steam up the chimney to draw the fire. That is the spare steam valve in case we fit an injector in the future. That is the boiler water gauge. That is the boiler water gauge blowdown valve to clear sediment out of the glass. That is the water pump bypass valve that controls the amount of water that the crosshead pump feeds into the boiler. So when it's closed down, screwed clockwise, all the delivery of the pump is being fed into the boiler. As you open it, progressively less and less goes in the boiler and more goes back to the tank. That's the whistle. And that's the engine reverser, screw reverser. It's in the forward position at the moment. Screw it clockwise to run the block forward for forward gear. Anti-clockwise runs the block backwards for backwards gear. Uh, boiler pressure gauge. Coal space. This lever here opens and closes the, the um, drain valve on the steam chest. So it's open in the forward position when the engine's cold and it'll, it'll clear the condensate out of the steam chest before you start to run. And when, when the engine's hot, you pull it backwards, like that, and that closes the valve. Walking around the engine, these two brass headed pins run across and hold the grate in. So to remove the grate and the ash pan, you just pull these two pins straight out and the grate and the ash pan will drop off the bottom. The left hand tank and the right hand tank both hold water, but it's only filled from the left hand tank. And it, the hand pump's in there. Coming to the front, to open the smoke box door, uns unscrew the outer handle, turn the inner handle 90 degrees, and then the door opens. Inside, this is the crossbar that the dart latches on to pull the door up tight. This is the blast pipe with the, with the jacket around the top with the blower jets, which you may need to clear occasionally with a primus pricker. Uh, tubes, boiler tubes in there need to be swept after each run. Uh, and obviously the ash needs to be cleaned out. Rocking shafts, um, valve gear uh, expansion links are down in here, valve rods, steam chest, two valve spindles, and higher up is the two engine main cylinder crossheads and piston rods. Now for lubrication, you want to use a, a straight 40 grade or a 50 grade oil and just oil each moving part all through. Obviously when the engine's up the, the right way you have to do it from underneath with an oil cam with a, with a sort of curved tube on the end. And some access can be done from the top through the hole in the foot grating, some has to be done from below. This valve here is the, the steam chest drain which is operated from the cab drains the condensate out of the steam chest. Um, that's it. The engine's lubricated by a displacement type lubricator which is located in the front of the right hand side tank. That's the filler and underneath, directly underneath, is a water drain. So to service the lubricator you remove the water drain, remove the top cap and let the residue run out and you replace the, the drain plug, fill it with steam oil. Uh, any grade of steam oil is fine really, Long, anything that the club supplies will be fine.
Right, in preparation for steaming, fill the side tanks with water. Fill through the left one, one left tank will balance and fill the right tank at the same time. And using the hand pump, fill the boiler. Continue pumping water into the boiler until you can see a third of a glass full and that will be just right. As the engine heats up, water will expand and it will come up to nearly half a glass. Because there's no natural draft through a model locomotive boiler, in order to light the fire, get the fire to burn, you need an electric fan, an electric suction fan. Um, this is a homemade one made out of a car heater blower motor and a centrifugal impeller. Um, just driven off a motorcycle battery. You can buy them commercially, uh, which will do just the same thing. Uh, to light the fire, ordinary barbecue lumpwood charcoal, which has been soaked overnight in paraffin, and you need to charge the firebox with about one mug full, about that much charcoal. Right, I've, I've filled the firebox with the lumpwood charcoal. Come here. Right, to light the fire you need to just remove the blower because otherwise the, the suction will just put the flames out on the shovel. Put the blower back in, just make sure the fire's catching. And close the door. Right, when you've let the charcoal fire establish for a while, start feeding a bit of coal. Uh, the coal we're using is uh, Welsh steam coal, uh, graded at bean size. Uh, several suppliers, uh, we buy us from Signal Fuels. Uh, put two or three shovelfuls on. Close the door and just leave it. There's no need to, to rush, just a little bit here and there. Put too much on, you'll just uh, smother it. So let the fire build slowly. Right, seven minutes since we lit the fire. Um, pressure gauge is reading just under 30 pound. Um, fire's getting established, just keep feeding the coal. Till the fire, till the level of the fire is about half an inch below the firebox door, so it's pretty well full up. When we get to 30 pounds, we can take the electric blower off, turn the engine steam blower on, and then it will be self self generated. You can see the fire's being pulled much more strongly now. The engine blower is much more efficient than the electric one.
as the pressure builds, turn the engine blower down. This pressure will build really quickly if the blower is on full. Basically, I'm lifting it at 80 pounds. Nicely established fire. Right, water goes flow down. If you open that, that will clear the sediment and water out of the glass. Half a glass of water is about where it wants to be. Uh, the axle pump, the crosshead pump is feeding at the moment. If you open the bypass, then the water's just being pumped back to the tank. And that will keep, as the boiler level drops, close the bypass, and then the water will go back into the boiler. When you're running, you should be able to find a position there that just maintains an equilibrium. When the fire's burnt bright, that's the time to put the coal on. You aim to keep the top of the fire just slightly black, then you get the maximum heat from it. The safety of our flow is taking the water down to about an eighth of a glass. The pump will now pump it back up. It's now coming back up to the quarter.
about half a glass, open the bypass. If you ever get in a situation where the water disappears in the bottom nut, you must drop the fire out of the engine and just turn the blower off, keep the fire hole door shut, put a rag in the chimney and just leave it. Don't try and pump any water in. Right, the fire's died, pressure's decayed to 30 pound. We'll drop the fire out, pull the two pins out, use some pliers because they'll be hot. Brake mash pan drop out. And you can open the boiler blow down. That will empty the boiler and it will clear any sediment that's formed around the bottom of the foundation room.